What's going on? Bottom line viewers, it's Mitch back here with another fantasy football stardom and sit em, this time for week number 12 of the 2019 NFL season. Before I dive in and give you my starts and sits at the quarterback, running back, wide receiver, and tight end positions, make sure that you do Gronk, spike the like button, and subscribe to the bottom line view for more NFL videos just like this this let's get right into it with the quarterback starts i'm starting off with Derek carr now the raiders are typically a run first football team but they play one of the worst secondaries in football the jets are 21st in passing yards allowed this season and they just don't overall have very good corners or cover linebackers i expect darren waller to have a big game in this one and Derek carr should be throwing the ball more as the jets are the number one team versus the run Matt Ryan versus the Tampa Bay Bucks. The Bucks have allowed the second most fantasy points to quarterbacks this season. Four straight top 10 quarterback performances. The Bucks are pretty bad versus the pass. And overall, Atlanta has been really firing, playing well as a team. I see them really scoring a lot of points in this game. Baker Mayfield versus Miami. Mayfield has scored 17 plus fantasy points in three straight games. The Dolphins are fourth in most passing touchdowns allowed this season through the air, so Mayfield should continue his nice performance versus Miami. Darnold versus the Raiders. The Raiders have allowed the third most passing touchdowns this season. Darnold has been playing a lot better with connecting with Jamison Crowder. Le'Veon Bell's playing a little bit better. Overall, Adam Gase is calling a better game, and it should continue versus the Raiders, who again not a very good passing defense and playing Derek Carr on the opposite side one of my other starts Jameis Winston versus Atlanta I understand that the Atlanta defense has been better but I'm not exactly fully convinced because they have not played a passing offense with the explosive ability of Jameis Winston and the Tampa Bay Bucks Winston will have to keep up with Matt Ryan in this game Atlanta has allowed the eighth most fantasy points per game to the quarterback position. My quarterback sits. I only have three this week because there's so many buys. It's kind of difficult to get five. But let's start off with Jared Goff. Goff is playing the Ravens. And the Ravens have quietly been an elite defense lately. And that's really thanks to a top three secondary. Only allowing 176 yards per game over the last three. Dak Prescott plays the Patriots in New England. New England has shut down quarterbacks. Quarterbacks are only allowing 7.9 fantasy points per game this season when they play the Patriots' outstanding secondary. Then you have Josh Allen. He plays the Broncos. I understand that he had the best game of his season last week, and they've been changing their perspective on offense, going more up-tempo. But when you play the Broncos, the Broncos shut down the pass. It's just that simple. They're the third-best team versus quarterbacks this season, only behind the Patriots and the 49ers. My running back starts James White of the Patriots versus Dallas. There's probably, likely, no Mohamed Sanu, no Philip Dorsett. That means a lot of targets coming for James White. Dallas is without one of their best cover backers in Leighton Vander Esch, and they've allowed the sixth most receptions this season to running backs, so that means well for James White. Tevin Coleman versus the Packers. Now, Green Bay's run defense is not good. Breida is out, making Coleman more valuable. Green Bay has allowed the fourth most yards and the second most touchdowns on the ground. You have Samuels versus the Bengals. The Bengals have allowed the most yards per game on the ground, 167 yards per game. That's almost 20 yards more than the second worst team, Miami. Kareem Hunt plays Cleveland. And Kareem Hunt plays the Dolphins, sorry, not Cleveland, he's on Cleveland. The Dolphins have allowed the second most rushing yards. I was just speaking about Cincinnati, how they're 20 yards worse than Miami. Well, Miami's the second worst team in that category. So Kareem Hunt, he's been very involved with Nick, with Nick Chubb. I believe that they both are a collective part of the game plan. They've been utilizing both in a lot of two back sets. I see that continuing this week versus Miami. Then you have Derrick Henry versus Jacksonville. Henry has traditionally blown up versus the Jags. Just remember that incredible run from just a season ago, which really started off his incredible December. Well, Derrick Henry versus Jacksonville. The Jags are actually horrible versus the run right now. They're allowing 170 yards per game 
over the last three games. My running back sits Hill versus Tampa Bay. The Bucs are top three versus the run this season. And I just expect Matt Ryan and Atlanta to attack the air and not really care about running the ball much. He hasn't been overly effective since Freeman has gone out, so I would prefer to sit him. Ronald Jones versus Atlanta on the flip side. As I said with Jameis Winston, I think this game is going to be a shootout. I think the way that the game script goes down is that the Bucks are probably down early, which means more passing, less running. Atlanta's better versus the run than they are the pass, so I would sit Ronald Jones. Surprisingly, I have Mark Ingram here versus the Rams. Well, the Rams actually are a top five run defense over the past three games, and really since getting Jalen Ramsey, they've been an elite defense. So I would consider Lamar Jackson a start, but Mark Ingram, I'm a little bit less inclined to starting him because more of the traditional run will be shut down by guys like Aaron Donald up front. Sony Michelle plays the Dallas Cowboys. This isn't a bad matchup by any means, but I just don't trust Sony Michelle or the Patriots rushing attack. Maybe Isaiah Wynn opens it up. I just don't see that happening this week. And Montgomery playing the Giants. Secretly, quietly, the Giants are actually in the top 10 versus the run since week number eight. So they're very good up the middle. The, uh, the Bears have a very weak offensive line with a lot of injuries. I just don't see this working out for Chicago. Should be a low scoring game. Wide receiver starts, Jamison Crowder versus Oakland, another juicy matchup on the schedule of Jamison Crowder. Oakland has allowed nine scores and the seventh most fantasy points to slot receivers this season. OBJ is on the start and sit him because really he hasn't been great and a lot of people are asking, should I start him, should I sit him on a weekly basis? Well, this should be a big game for him. I would consider him a start versus Miami. Like I said, Baker should have a big game, which means OBJ should also have a big game. Ridley versus the Bucks. The Bucks have one of the worst secondaries in the league. As I said, they allow just about the most yards and fantasy points to quarterbacks. I think Ridley drawing the second corner of the Bucks, getting less attention than Julio, should have a field day here. And Tyrell Williams plays the Jets. The receivers lined up out wide versus the Jets have actually scored 10 touchdowns this season. I would expect Tyrell Williams to get in the end zone this game. My wide receiver sits McLaurin versus Detroit. McLaurin has struggled lately and will likely see a lot of Darius Slay. He hasn't quite been clicking with his college teammate in Haskins. I would not expect that to start this week versus one of the best corners in the game. Michael Gallup versus New England. Now the Patriots secondary, they just suffocate receivers, and it's very difficult to complete any sort of passes versus them. But I would consider Dak a low-end start, and I would consider Amari Cooper a low-end wide receiver one. But in terms of Michael Gallup, I would not consider the external weapons of the Cowboys, like Jason Witten or Michael Gallup, to be good starts. Even if Gilmore plays on Cooper, Jason McCourty or Jonathan Jones will be taking Michael Gallup. Marquise Brown versus the Rams. All I'm going to say is Jalen Ramsey. And then you have Robert Woods versus Baltimore. Woods is banged up and he's facing a good secondary in Baltimore, which I said already has improved vastly. I just don't see this one working out for Robert Woods. My tight end starts. Dwelly versus Green Bay. This is if George Kittle is out. I think that he's proven he has the connection with Jimmy G to put in your starting lineup. And Dallas Goddard versus Seattle. He is actually the number two target probably in this offense, especially if Nelson Aguilar is out and then Alshon Jeffries dealing with an injury. They're playing a lot of two tight end sets. They're actually better when they utilize them. I think Dallas Goddard might get in the end zone again this week. Griffin versus Oakland. He's been awesome lately. I don't know if you've noticed. If he's on your waiver wire, I'd consider picking him up if you need or are in search of a tight end because he's been very effective and utilized a lot within this offense. Oakland has actually surrendered the fifth most fantasy points to tight end, so it's another good matchup for Ryan Griffin. Jacob Hollister versus Philadelphia. The Seahawks, tight ends this season have been awesome for fantasy. It doesn't really matter who. 12.8 or more fantasy points six times, including five games of 18 plus points. I would consider Jacob Hollister a pretty decent under the radar start. 
And if you're desperate, I don't mind Ben Watson this week. As I stated with James White, Sanu and Dorsett are likely out. That means Brady's going to be relying a lot on Edelman, James White, and people that he knows and trusts. And Ben Watson is in that trust tree. He had the best game of his season last week. And I would consider this week versus Dallas to actually be a not a bad matchup and i would say that the red zone he could potentially get a touchdown so if you're desperate at tight end ben watson all right guys thank you for joining me here it's been mitch make sure you gronk spike the like button subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and peace out